Hello, Sustainable Engineering. Welcome back. We, we have a little duct problem. I sent you an email on that. I'm going to try and pull this off while they're stepped out, but <laughs> here's what we got. Uh, we got the ducting, we got a ladder, and it literally the ducting fell out. So there's a super loud fan blowing, like it's obnoxious. So, and it's actually been that way all term, uh, really loud in 1659. So they're trying to fix it. If they come back, I might, I might chop this, um, but I'm going to start into it and get through the PowerPoint, I hope. So um, let's get going. All right, this is the introduction to electricity. You're getting a lot of information about electricity, but that's because it is a resource that we use incredibly a lot. So most of you have experienced uh, power outage in our area, and you know what that's like. Like we are so dependent on this form of energy that we have built an entire country based on electricity. So let's just understand how it works. Uh, electricity at the atomic level, atoms are the smallest piece of an element, okay? Atoms, smallest piece of an element, and they contain the properties of the element. This is important because, you know, with electricity, we have conductors and non-conductors, and we should know why. So, um, Components of an atom, we have the nucleus, that's the inside center portion of the atom, protons and neutrons. Uh, protons are the positively charged ones, that's the red ones. And then the neutrons are the uncharged. So they're, they're not negative, they're just uncharged particles. All right, so the atomic number is generated from protons in the nucleus. So those red protons, that's how we get the atomic number. It identifies the element. And this one has four protons in its nucleus. All right, so electrons are the things that orbit around that nucleus, right? Electrons are negatively charged particles. Um, they orbit move around the nucleus of an atom. And there is several rings, typically, of these orbits. Three-dimensionally, they look like that. So in the real world, they look like that. But we're going to look at them like this, two-dimensionally, where we have the center nucleus, and then we have these electrons traveling around it. OK? So the valence electrons are the outermost electrons of an atom. So this one has two in its outermost orbit. All right, so the way they work, electricity at the atomic level, electron orbits, orbit number one, there's typically two. So this is pretty common. I'll just toggle through. And then the valence orbit is the one that we're interested in because that's the one that will move electricity um, through the conductor or not move it if it's a non-conductor, okay? So orbits start closest to the nucleus and then head out and the last ring is the valence orbit. All right, so let's look at copper. Most of us know that copper is a conductor. Um, Sorry about that, if that's a spoiler alert. <laughs> Atoms like to have their valence ring either filled, like fully eight, or empty, zero. But they don't really like it partially filled. So uh, copper has one electron in its valence orbit, right? So again, I guess that was a spoiler alert. And is copper a conductor and insulator? It's definitely a conductor. Why? Well, because there's just one and it's an unstable valence. So that one doesn't know whether to stay or go and it's very unstable. So sulfur has six, right? There they are. And is sulfur a conductor or an insulator? Sulfur is pretty stable. It's got six out there. It's not easy to knock them out. They are kind of stuck, right? It is an insulator. All right, I'm going quickly. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but really what we wanna know is 
about this electron flow. Electron from one orbit can knock out an electron from another orbit if it's unstable. So if we're, if we're building a material that has this outer valence that's unstable, that one electron is ready to go, man. It'll knock out super easy. So what happens is an electron travels in and knocks it out very simply and takes its place. So when an atom loses an electron, it seeks another to fill the vacancy. So it, it actually attracts these electrons when one gets knocked out. So electricity is created as these electrons collide and transfer from atom to atom. So the atom doesn't move, right? It just transfers these electrons from atom to atom. So here is a little simulation of what's going on when we hit or charge a conductor, right? If we hit it with electricity, we hit it with a jolt of some kind, uh, pop that electron out, it wants to like find a new location and it just will pop out the next one. That is the flow of electrons or electricity. All right, so conductors and insulators, electrons flow easily between atoms, and it's difficult between atoms, right? One to three valence electrons in the outer orbit are conductors. Five and eight, insulators. There's our very common ones, right? All right, very good. Just cruising through, letting you see those. I don't need to like talk you through that. Um, I'm not going to go very deep into this. I'm actually going to stop here in a little bit, I think. But um, these systems of conductors and insulators uh, form these paths of travel. So, you know, if we don't want the electricity to go to people, we put uh, insulators on the handle of pliers, right? So if they actually touch uh, electricity, um, it won't go to people, right? So properties of electrical circuits are those kind of things. So we have volts, amps, and ohms. So let's go through this. This is by far the best uh, analogy, I think, to electricity. Um, we, have a, we have a tank of water, right? Uh, we can think of that as a, as a battery or just a, a source of electricity. Um, and we have a, a pipe that's gonna fill with water, right? Uh, and that could be our wiring. So. When we open that switch, when we hit the switch to the light uh, or the turn the stove on, that opens the valve and allows water to start flowing, right? When the faucet switch is off, there is no flow. When the faucet switch is on, there's flow. That's your current, same thing. Think about those electrons moving. That's what's going on. It's not really water, obviously, All right? All right. So a, you got to have a circuit for, for electricity to flow. So in order to get shocked by electricity, you would have to be grounded. So the electricity could travel through your body into the ground. So if you're wearing rubber boots, right? And it's not too moist out and you touch an electrical source, you might not get shocked because there's no path for it. It just comes to your body and it doesn't leave your body. There's nowhere for the electrons to vibrate right? If there's a circuit, then, and that circuit has a path, then electricity will flow. And when electricity flows, that's when we can use it, right? It can light a light. All right. So there's conventional current, and then there's electron flow. Um, the difference is conventional current assumes that current flows. All right, they're back, so I'm gonna pause. This is good for now, and I'll continue in a while. Yeah. What's your guys' schedule? Hmm, let me see.